Hey everyone, Node Guy here. Thanks for tuning in. So this is a brand new channel that I created to help people learn Node.js. Originally it started as a request from some friends to create videos on tech. But instead of focusing on broad tech, I wanted to narrow it down and focus just on Node.js. I hope to create maybe a video a week or more and make them roughly six to ten minutes long as to not bore people. <laughs> so today we're going to just do an intro to Node.js. So each episode, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually highlight what I'm going to do every episode. So we're going to talk about why was Node.js created, what problem it solves, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Google V8 and how that fits into the whole thing. So why was Node.js created? Well, first of all, JavaScript is very popular. And because it's so popular, you know, people often wished they could use it on the server side. And in fact, there was a point in history where JavaScript did work on the server side. It was in the late 90s. And it came in the form of Netscape Enterprise Server. And that was created right around the time that JavaScript was, was created, but it just never really went anywhere. That was still during the browser wars, which JavaScript ultimately won. And now that it has one, it, it makes sense to take it to the server side. It's always been a shame that it, that it you know, took this long to do it. But now that it's here, it's great. So what problem does it solve? Well, it operates asynchronously, and that's a pretty big change. Now the browser, anybody that deals in the browser for JavaScript already knows that things are async. And you know that because when you register an event for, say, a button click, it doesn't freeze the browser. If you contrast that with a synchronous language, a synchronous language would, would wait for something to happen before it can continue on. I, I guess a good example of that would be, say, in PHP, if you make a query or you read a file, you have to actually wait until that file is read before any more code can be executed. This is not true with JavaScript. What happens when you register an event, all it does is it allocates a little memory on the side there and says that when this event is fulfilled, please run the following code. And the following code comes in the form of a callback, which we'll talk about in some other video. But anyways, this is all managed via the event loop, which is a very important piece of JavaScript. Now, I want to make clear that Asynchronous is different from parallel. So JavaScript itself does not run in parallel. It runs single-threaded. What does run in parallel is everything outside the context of, of Node.js. So for instance, if you were to ask Node.js to open 100 files, the request to open that file for each file would be done in a synchronous fashion. However, the operating system would be attempting to open them all up in an asynchronous fashion. And then they would just be scheduling callbacks, which would drop onto the event loop and, and be executed more or less in order as they finish. And that's how JavaScript works. So I also want to make clear that, that evented I.O., or I think as they call it, non-blocking I.O., event-driven non-blocking I.O., I want to make clear this is not a new concept. It's, it's already present, say, with, with Ruby's Event Machine or Python's Tornado. You know, those are both event-driven, non-blocking I.O. model. However, what sets Node.js apart from that is Node.js was built from the ground up to be that. And so was JavaScript. When JavaScript was created, they needed to do events in the browser. Therefore, it was built like that from the beginning. If you look at Ruby's event machine and Python's tornado and things like that, you'll find that that was all an afterthought. That was all a thing where they said, oh, well, Python does A, B, and C, and I can use A, B, and C to create this event-driven, non-blocking mechanism within an otherwise synchronous language. But it wasn't built from the ground to do that, and that's why I believe Node.js is superior to say Python's Tornado or Ruby's Event Machine as it relates to Evented I.O. So how does Google's V8 fit into the whole thing? Well, if you've ever used Chrome, anytime JavaScript executes on Chrome, it's being executed with the Google V8 engine. Every browser has their own engine. For instance, Mozilla, I think, has SpiderMonkey, and 
Internet Explorer has Trident, they all do the same thing. They, they interpret and execute JavaScript. And they all do so according to the I believe it's ECMA 262 standard. And that's, that's why as a developer you don't necessarily have to wonder, will my JavaScript work on browser A versus browser B? You can, generally speaking, expect that one set of JavaScript will function the same across all browsers. This is not always true, but the occurrences are kind of rare. So what makes this really special is Google V8 can be ran standalone. It can, it can interpret and execute JavaScript standalone. So the core of Node.js is Google's V8. However, what Node.js really is, is it's everything that JavaScript can't do in the browser that it should be able to do to be classified as a server-side language. A couple of prominent examples would be, say, reading files or making network calls. This is something that JavaScript in the browser cannot do, except within very limited circumstances. Yeah, JavaScript can do XHR, and it can write to, say, local storage, but those are all based on browser APIs. When Node.js reads a file or makes a network call, this is happening at the operating system level, and that's what makes it different. And all the law of the bindings are is it's C++ code that, that that's basically what Node.js is. It's C++ code that is accessible through certain node functions, such as, say, fs, I'm sorry, so like when you call fs.readfile, what it does is it calls binding.open. And when you call binding.open, what that calls is at a low level, it calls the open function inside the actual C++ code. And then it goes forth and it either makes an async call or a sync call. It then returns everything back or schedules a call back, just as you might expect it to do. And that's kind of how the whole flow goes. So Node.js is not the JavaScript interpreter itself. It's all the level of the bindings for things that server-side JavaScript should do. Google V8 is, is still the thing that does the actual interpretation. And that's the end of the episode. So hopefully everyone learned a little bit and had a little fun along the way. If I forgot to cover something or you'd like to learn more or you have a suggestion on what, should, or on what I should cover next, post a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss new videos. Thanks a lot and never stop learning. See you next time.